Report. We're joined now by Republican Senator Mike Rounds, a member of the Foreign Relations and Armed Services Committees, and Democrat Jamie Raskin, member of the House's January 6th Committee, author of the new book, Unthinkable. And Senator Rounds, let me begin with you. I want to get to the fallout of January 6th, but let me begin with uh, my interview with Secretary of State Antony Blinken in this showdown with Russia over Ukraine. Are you confident that the Biden administration is doing what it needs to do to prevent Russia from going in? I think we'll support the administration's efforts to find a diplomatic solution. We also have to make it very clear to Mr. Putin that his antics right now in and around Ukraine are unacceptable, which means that if additional sanctions have to be imposed to send that message, that would be appropriate. Nord Stream 2 is one example of a place where we could do that now. The president has the authority to do so. And I think sending a message to Mr. Putin that he's going to get a lot more accomplished using diplomatic means rather than uh, threatening uh, to invade uh, is something that we should be, be very, very firm about. So look, as long as the administration is moving forward and they are very clear to Mr. Putin that his antics <clears throat> excuse me, are not going to be rewarded, then we're going to be very supportive of the administration. You heard Martha Raddatz's piece right there. How do, what do you say? You, you voted to certify. Uh, the election last year. You condemned the protests as an insurrection. What do you say to all those Republicans, all those veterans who believe the election was stolen, who've bought uh, the falsehoods coming from former President Trump? We looked, as a part of our due diligence, we looked at over 60 different accusations made in multiple states. While there were some irregularities, there were none of the irregularities which would have risen to the point where they would have changed the vote outcome in a single state. The election was fair, as fair as we've seen. Uh, we simply did not win the election as Republicans for the presidency. And moving forward, and that's the way we want to look at this, moving forward, we have to refocus once again on what it's going to take to win the presidency. And if we simply look back and tell our people don't vote because you know there's cheating going on, then we're going to put ourselves in a, in, a, in a huge disadvantage. So moving forward, let's focus on what it takes to win those elections. We can do that, but we have to let people know that they can, they can believe and they can have confidence that those elections are fair. And, uh, and, and, and that is in every single state that we looked at. One of the big questions is going to be whether President Trump can run in the next uh, election. Uh, you voted to acquit him in the impeachment trial last year, but you also said he could be prosecuted criminally. And our next guest, Congressman Raskin, has said that Congress could pass a law preventing former President Trump from running again, citing the provision of the 14th Amendment, which prohibits anyone who betrayed their oath by supporting insurrection from holding state or federal office. He calls it a live possibility. Do you think it is? Well, let, let me just share with you my thoughts on, on, on the issue in general. Every single individual in the United States is subject to the court systems. What, what happens with a president is that he has the shield of office, which in many cases prohibits or limits the ability of the courts to address issues surrounding that. What a, an impeachment does is take away that shield. President Trump was no longer president at the time that that occurred. Uh, the courts are the appropriate place where those questions should be answered. This is not going to be up to members of the United States Senate or the House, in, in my opinion. I think this is an issue which the courts can decide, uh, and, and most certainly if there is evidence there, this is going to be up to the Justice Department to bring it forward and to move with it. But once again, every single person uh, has protections under that system. The former president has protections under that system as well. But this is something that should be decided in the courts. And, uh, and I don't think it's something that we should be legislating on right now. So just to be clear then, if, if the Department of Justice comes forward with evidence that President Trump was indeed complicit, more evidence that President Trump was complicit, you'd support prosecution? In this particular case, it's not going to be up to a member of the Senate to support prosecution. What it's going to be is that it's up to the Justice Department to make that decision. And every single person who is accused of a crime is considered innocent until proven guilty. We all know that. The same thing with a former president. So if they think they've got that, they can bring the evidence forward. Um, in my opinion, they haven't done that yet. Uh, and it's going to be up to them to make that case. Uh, but that shield of the presidency does not exist for someone who is a former president. Everybody, you, me, everybody in this country is subject to the courts of this country. Separately, could you support President Trump if he runs again? 
I'm sorry? Could you support President Trump if he runs again? I'll take a hard look at it. Uh, personally, what, what I've told people is, is I'm going to support the Republican nominee to be president. I'm not sure that the eventual nominee has even shown up yet. There's still over two years to go. We're, we're, we're going to focus on the, uh, the next election cycle. It's critical that we take back the House. It's critical that we take back the United States Senate. And doing and based upon that, then we'll decide who our nominee for president is going to be. Senator Brown, <clears throat> thanks for your time this morning. You bet.